you guys. So today's shave is going to be on two days of growth. And it will be with Declaration Grooming Hindsight in the Milk Stick base with a Permasharp blade, same one we used recently. I changed the base plates in my Timeless razor here to the uh, more aggressive 95 gap. And then we've got a very enjoyable badger brush from Saponificio Veracino. Looking forward to that as usual. So let us get the brush back in the water. It's been in there for several minutes, so it, that's plenty. And then the Timeless, this is the Titanium Timeless. Can I tell by the handle? And yeah, the 95 gap yeah, says TI and then 95 there. This Perma Sharp is on its maybe ninth use. And uh, this is not the Gillette 7 o'clock Perma Sharp. It's just the Perma Sharp uh, Super Stainless. Uh, I believe it's, if you see one that says Perma Sharp, uh, Perma Sharp Stainless, then it's the Super Stainless. It's all the same from what I can tell. I love the lightness that the titanium gives this razor. It's timeless razors can be a little bulky and heavy for some people, but the the titanium can change that to a more medium size, manageable type weight, uh, more nimble, that sort of thing. Obviously, we don't need a razor made of titanium because our beards are so studly, right? We uh, titanium's handy because of the lightness that it brings. Stainless steel obviously is uh, plenty strong enough to do the tasks we need, but uh, titanium is, is that a uh, strong um, uh, plus the lighter weight. And so that's why titanium is sometimes chosen. Uh, of course, some guys might choose it because it's an elite metal. It's us. It's, you know, prestige, you know, some people have those kind of reasons for buying shaving products, right? Not me. All right. Um, I, uh, why I, I don't bought it used, I get a great deal, first of all. There's no way I'd buy this um, for, for retail, um, uh, personally. But I used the bronze, and I knew that I enjoyed this handle, and I knew that uh, when I have used this head in the stainless I knew that it gave me wonderful wonderful shaves and so the um, uh, I knew that the titanium combo was likely to be very enjoyable for me so we uh, as you can see I'm somewhere else and they're gonna fly in here I'm gonna have to kill that hindsight is if you want to see the specific notes you can look in the description of the video I have used this uh, before uh, it's got some nice uh, woody, ambery, leathery kind of notes. It's got a neat story behind it when Scott created the scent. And this is actual masking tape here that was used. This up here is a picture. Got me slapping myself on TV, right? Um, got a fly. The um, top is the is the label masking tape it's it's fake net masking tape it looks like it but down here it's actual masking tape right there but yeah i uh, really enjoy the notes um this was a, a soapy made kind of uh in 2020 when everybody was just having a crappy year because of covid and stuff and uh so that's just kind of the story behind this one i've got my 40 milliliters of water in my jigger me and my face wet all right, blades in the razor. Let me go ahead and load up the soap. Let's do 25 seconds of loading. That should be enough for milk steak. Shaking out much of the water here. 40 started right there. So we'll go to 05. Just medium pressure, medium to light. Okay. 
lots of tips in this brush. It's very soft though, but it picks up lather nicely. Three D printed lather bowl, like usual. I think the uh, masking tape labels there are pretty cool. Um, on the side of the tub, as well, it's masking. It's actual masking tape, and so that means that he must have handwritten, you know, these guys with a with a black marker, right? And uh, so that's pretty cool. The scent notes on it were attractive enough for me to go ahead and do a blind buy with it. Uh, I don't remember though if I, you know, bought it used or, or bought it new. But I looked at the scent notes and didn't really wait for any reviews to come out. And either the first time I saw it used, I, I you know, bought it or, or I just went ahead and bought it new. We start out with pastiness. You will watch that change as we go. I am, I finally got around to looking at symmetrical pottery and they've got an Etsy page with a bunch of good designs and trying to work together which one I'd like to buy from them. They've got a, a couple of entries that are, you know, choose your own options, you know, where you choose the base color and then you choose whether it has the recess in the middle for the, the puck of soap, that sort of thing. So we put some water in and it has inflated the brush, as you can see, that's very open and very splayed. And it's softened up the lather just a touch. And that's okay. With a big knot like this, some of the water that you add is, is definitely going to go toward the knot. But if you get good circulation, if you work the leather long enough, then it doesn't really matter that you've got a big knot or a small knot because you're, you're circulating the lather through the whole bowl and you'll be able to use whatever is in your knot. If you don't mix very long and you just kind of rely on whatever's outside the knot, then yeah, sure. Later on as you're working the shave, things could change and you could get pastiness on there, whatever. Or, um, and that could be negative, or you can uh, figure out how to work it to your advantage. See, as you can see, we're getting creamier. You can figure out how to work it to your advantage because maybe if, and that's why this hobby is so subjective, right? Maybe if you uh, keep your, you don't quite mix for as long, you keep your brush with a little bit more concentrate than the bowl has. And then maybe you like to keep your face really rinsed and, you know, kind of tweak it with water as you go. Or, you know, so it, you know, I mean, there's room for all kinds of customization if you want to, right? I love this brush. It's got a big, uh, like, 27.5 knot. I don't have very many at all knots that are bigger than 26 millimeters and because it's just not needed um, but this just has it's like a big old bear hugging your face you know it's very enjoyable the tips are super luxurious and comfy and the display is not uh, not very backbony it's a kind of medium and so you get a, a wonderful comfort from the from the backbone too. It's just a terrific feeling. Not a whole lot of scrub. I do not like a whole lot of scrub. I am probably going to be using a bore brush for the la uh, for austere August. And so I'm definitely going to be using my share of badger brushes here in July. looking very nice. I think I'm going to just mix for just a minute here and I bet we're good. Just kind of want to get 
consistency with what's in the brush and what's in the bowl. I don't want any wet spots. I want what's in the bowl to be all consistent, definitely. Um, and then I also want good circulation. So I'll do a, little, a few plunges to, to push the lather up into the brush and, and then kind of make it mix with what's in the bowl and make what's in the brush come out, you know, that sort of thing. good. I think I remember to run milk steak just a little, not quite as wet as I usually like it, and so hopefully my assumption is correct. The uh, little squeezy clamp that holds my cell phone right there, I noticed it bending tonight, and so I'm using, I'm kind of staring at some rubber bands right there on my camera, uh, because I went ahead and bent it off because I didn't want the phone all of a sudden to uh, that to break and just phone fall on the ground. You just never know which is going to be the last fall for it, right? All right, get my face wet. Two days of growth today. And this Permasharp razor blade has just been phenomenal. Uh, so yesterday or two days ago, you know, the last shave, I used the, the smooth, the mild plate from the Timeless here. And so today it's the thicker one, the, not the thicker, the more aggressive one. You can, if you've seen my recent videos, then you know that I desperately needed a haircut and I finally took care of that. So at least my goatee should no longer be holding on to water and potentially messing up any lathers. You mix your lather up in a bowl you could just kind of paint it on and, and get to shaving but and if you're stuck with time then you know so be it but if you I'm just kind of raking up some of the excess because I was starting to get some stuff flopping around and falling on my shirt didn't want to waste it smells really nice very glad that I got this. Very manly. But um, if you take the time to work it into your skin, a good soap will then provide you protection. I was reading a thread today about pre-shaves and one guy was saying that it gives him more slickness and skin protection. And uh, to me, kind of the, what has been revealed to me in my own experience has been that it's that slickness that protects your skin. It's that, that water, that hydration that protects your skin. And I find that uh, with creams or oils used as a pre-shave, uh, that people say that it um, increases the slickness of the soap. Well, maybe if you've got a crappy soap, maybe you need that. But, uh, I mean, any good soap is going to provide tons of slickness if you know how to build a good lather. And I've actually found, especially with oils, that it actually slowed down my razor. And uh, I felt that there was more drag, and that's not protecting my skin. Um, and so for the, it's very interesting for the very reasons that he was citing his enjoyment of pre-shaves, uh, those are the exact reasons I don't like pre-shaves. Each to his own, right? If it, if he's tried it both ways, or even if he hasn't, if he just wants to shave that way, that's what our hobby's about, right? Shave however you want, even if you have no good reason to do it. All right. Permasharp, good many uses on it. And this is just mowing through two days of growth. Just without a care in the world. Light touch as usual. I really enjoy the 95 gap. It does have more blade feel than the, the 68, but it's definitely not, to my skin at least, aggressive. 
and there are definitely some razors that I don't enjoy shaving with because they are aggressive so I don't have tough skin. Now the 68 open comb, if you've watched my channel very much, you know that's one that is really, uh, really aggressive for me. Way more aggressive than the 95 solid bar, so I can't imagine uh, trying out the 95 open comb. I'm sure I probably couldn't even use it. I mean, I can't use the 68 unless it's got a really dull blade in it. Or smoothed out blade, let's call that old. Already. Shave looks terrific. Let's uh, rinse. Well, that is kind of the perfect consistency of lather. Um, some things I look for in my own preferences are, uh, does it have a creamy feel? I think that's kind of luxurious. Um, and that's a perk. It doesn't have to have a creamy feel to work. You know, it can be super wet. You know, I may have added too much water and it may still work really well, but my preference is that it has a creamy feel. And then it needs to be super slick. That's my number two. That's my second. And these are not in a particular order. Um, and also, I like for it to feel good during the rinsing process. That, that tactile event during the shave is, is something I really have come to enjoy. I didn't know um, about that when I started, obviously. The, the way the lather feels with the brush, you know, that's something that most people are going to instantly realize that's important to them as they, as they try to find a soap with it that makes a lather that they just really enjoy. Uh, but I've discovered that, yeah, sure, that's definitely important to me, but right along with that, boy, when I, when I go to rinse my face and I get this nice creamy feel and really slick, you know, and then I rinse it away and I start with my next pass, I like that so much better than when I do some splash and then it's it's so thin that it just kind of rinses away with a watery kind of slickness that that's very serviceable and in some of the vegan soaps and some of the inexpensive soaps uh, you'll get that and it, it works and a lot of times the soap will go a long way but that's just not as enjoyable for me uh, and so this uh, is a terrific base uh, for that kind of uh, for my personal goals there. We'll do cross grain now. And this is very comfortable. I mean, just a tiny bit of blade feel. You, you do know it's there, and so it's pretty easy to make sure you're using an angle that's cutting. However, it's very comfortable. Predictable, consistent. Really, very nice. I'm glad that Timeless chose to go the 95 route because you know they they could have gone with something more aggressive, and I wouldn't enjoy it nearly as much as as the 95. And this titanium just is nice and light. I'm able to go pretty quick. Very nimble, controllable, that sort of thing. Really liking the Permasharp so far. I haven't taken a Permasharp very far yet. This is probably my first Permasharp blade that I've used, and so I've, this is the ninth time, I believe, and that's how many times I've used a Permasharp. And it seems to be a blade that I have left behind um, to my own disservice because I'm really enjoying it. It is feeling so smooth, like it did the last couple times I used it, that I actually did the against the grain pass here uh, on my neck, the a pattern right there that was ended up to be against the grain. And it gave me just a little bit of kind of stealth irritation buildup. Uh, it, but it dismissed quickly, you know, 10 minutes after the shave, it was gone, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, and so I think I've learned not to do that, even if this feels so good during the first three passes, uh, not to do the against the grain right there, um, unless I'm just going for a super close shave. 
I know that it'll give me irritation, but it'll be very short-lived and very minor. But if I just want total comfort, I just skip that against the grain uh, process right there. All right. Get rid of the excess drippy drippiness. This particular lather was, as I was ending my work with it on the first pass, it was kind of starting to feel just a little pasty. And so I, uh, I kind of knew that it would, it would work itself out. Because as my face keeps getting more water with the rinses, you know, then it was going to bring that lather to a really perfect place. I don't need to work my face this much on the third pass. I mean, I've already scrubbed it after that, during that first one. And so this is all just me having fun with the brush and just really enjoying the, the feel of it. And I've got it. We're on the third pass now. We've got that on my face. And I've got maybe two or three passes of lather here left over. And so I'm glad I just loaded for 25 seconds. I definitely need, didn't need to go more than that. Uh, the scent here, uh, it is strong enough to where I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing, experiencing it during the shave. I have used a good many of the recent milk steak soaps that have been put together by Scott. And while many of the scents were just wonderful, the only way I was able to really get them is to put my nose in the bowl. And this one, I don't have to do that. It's still kind of light, but, I, but I'm still experiencing it nicely during the shave. All right, cross grain again. So this is just kind of picking up touch-ups. Any little extra guys that just kind of got missed. Perfect positioning in this razor as well. You won't have to adjust the blade. Locks in just right every time. And not going against the grain, I'm going to go cross grain but from the other direction. Not super smooth, but very still quite comfortable. And there we go. If I want to do that again, I can just kind of re... And uh, the fact that it was two days of growth is just not even a factor. It did very well with just zero problems of having an extra day growth. This Permasharp mode through that first pass easily. Great comfort right now here after the third pass it's rinsed away. I wanted to show you why the timeless razors are so smooth. The stainless steel and the titanium have this same head design here and obviously you can see the top cap and how it's got good coverage. It goes very close to the edge of the blade here but the bottom I'll show you the 68. It's the same as the 95. Look how far this base plate goes toward the edge. That's the secret. Many razors go half this distance and stop, and they rely on this pushing up against the blade to keep it held up into a curve. Well, with timeless, as you can see, the, the top cap has the curve and the base plate has a curve as well. And they both recess up there together. And so it's got, it continues that support in the center of the blade and then farther out toward the edge. And there are other razors that do this, uh, though not quite with this same channel. You see right there, most of them don't have that funkiness right there but razors like carve and wolfman they all go out to the 
the bottom of the blade and keep good support there. And so that's why they will give you different shaves than, than razors that don't do that. Uh, and there are even expensive razors like the Blackland Blackbird that, uh, that doesn't do that at all. It's got a very narrow place in the, on the base plate where it actually contacts the blade and it relies on that springiness of the blade uh, to kind of keep that bow because the top cap has the bow and uh, uh, but that, that gives you a different feel it's a little bit less smooth and steady but uh, some razors can magically do that well uh, some razors it just it's, it's got a more scratchy feeling a uh, more inconsistent feeling uh, scrapey you can sometimes that, that's what produces that audio and that's some, sometimes that's exactly what certain shavers like and so there's nothing wrong with that but if you're like me then this is a reason why the uh, timeless presents such a smooth and consistent shave and uh, and you enjoy that if you're like me so terrific and like I showed the other day I'm currently keeping the second base plate here in my little case in the place where the tucks would normally go and that's working out pretty well I do have just a, a hair of uh, tenderness in one or two spots, but it's so mild that I just don't even mind it at all. And the closeness, ooh, that's just a wonderful combination. Even with me not going against the grain right there, I don't see any tips. Phenomenal. That's just a terrific blade here. Uh, it does probably cut me a little closer than the 68. The 68 is more comfortable though, and so I can kind of pick which way I go. This one still has uh, just a touch of blade feel, uh, for me at least. Uh, it's got excellent speed, the glide here, the lather was doing a great job with that. And you, you do feel that edge, but it's locked down so tight, it, uh, it, it almost has a smoothness to it because uh, of that strength behind the edge. Uh, very enjoyable, uh, fully, by me at least. And uh, like we saw, we've got tons of lather left over. Um, I'm going to repeat the recent post-shave routine because this the Lucky Tiger and the Sterling Barbershop Frag did really well together. Well, darn it, Lucky Tiger. The little stopper there popped right out and so about 20 shaves worth of stuff just came out man so we will put it all over our skin so that it can nourish so that it won't go to waste well, glad I did that over the sink. There is just a tiny bit left, but I guess, I guess with this stopper here, I, I mean, make sure, you know, hold it while you tip stuff over. Didn't see that coming. That white thing just popped right out. Okay, so uh, uh, it doesn't have any alcohol, so it's very comfortable, very nourishing for your skin. Chamomile, calendula. Uh, aloe, that sort of stuff, really good for your, good for your skin. Nice orange scent on this. It's kind of light, um, and then it's going to taste, taste. It's going to smell really good, go really well with the Sterling Barbershop. And how much water did we use today? So we did 25 seconds of loading with the milk steak base, and 25 milliliters of water. That happened to match up this time. Pretty cool. All right, and this is what this lowly badger looks like after a good towel stropping. Nice and soft. The tips don't get crispy with this one, and so it, it's a great one to just kind of have on the desk next to you and just kind of feel of it as you go throughout your day if you're a shaving nerd like me. Let's go ahead and do the Sterling Barber Shop. It is night, but this uh, the Sterling does carry over through the night and well into the next day. And so I've been very, been very happy with the longevity here. 
So the Permashar continues with nine shaves here, right? Or was this eight? I think it's nine. Yeah, ninth. Uh, terrific, just a terrific, terrific shave. And uh, to me, I, I couldn't see why a person would throw away the blade at this point. It's just not showing any signs of irritation or tugging at all. Just phenomenal. Uh, so, yeah, well, here's the good news. Um, this was my Lucky Tiger that I was about done with, so it only had about this much in there in the first place, and so at least if I was going to have one come out like that, it was the one where, that was mostly empty. Uh, have enjoyed that quite a bit. Okay. I've used an aluminum razor before, and I didn't really like the fact that I had to kind of pull it through my hair. It was an ATT. Uh, aluminum razor and uh, I did however like the nimbleness of it and so the titanium brings in what I like of the aluminum razor but also what I like about the stainless steel razor um, the it has enough inertia it has enough inertia as you're working to to feel smooth because that inertia is allowing it to 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 carry through the hair. You're not pulling it through the hairs. Uh, and so you've got that going for you. It's got enough weight to, to be smooth like that. Um, and, uh, but it's got enough, uh, but it's light enough to where it feels nimble. It's easy to maneuver. You're just not held back by its weight at all. And uh, with some of the stainless steel razors, you might uh, kind of get that. And so it really uh, is the kind of the best of both worlds. The, uh, uh, Everything about the stainless steel that I love, the only thing I didn't love about it was maybe the weight a little bit with the timeless. And, uh, but then you take that away and you make it more nimble, slightly less heavy, but not too light to where I don't enjoy it, to where it uh, has that inertia. So it's, it's just a perfect little zone. Um, you know, and I mean, to me, that's a contender for a favorite razor, really, um, because the it may be expensive, but what if that's the one you saved up for? Um, you know, you didn't have maybe a collection of 40 razors. You had one. Maybe, you know? Maybe. So, yeah, almost baby butt smooth on my cheeks, wonderfully close on my neck, and even here, about as close as I ever get without going against the grain. So, uh, comfortable shave today. A little bit of uh, residual tenderness, but it's so, and it's almost where I only feel it when I uh, touch it, you know, that sort of thing. So it's just going to be gone very soon. Uh, great sense today with the hindsight, and I think the hindsight is working very well uh, with the Sterling Barbershop. I think they've got some neat things in common, and so uh, that is, that's carrying over nicely. And uh, yeah, poor thing about the Lucky Tiger, losing a lot of that. But we soldier on, and uh, that's one of my favorite brushes, big old, big old badger, and um, it has a gold tongue pewter ring there, and this is the amber color. Kind of see through it just a touch. Um, I've looked on their site to see if maybe I wanted to have a different one because this is such a great brush that I enjoy so much that I thought, you know what, if I sold this one, I bought this one used, but. If I liked another design better, I know that I like this knot so much that I would save up for getting the right look here. And uh, I think initially when I saw this brush years and years ago, before I thought that I would own one, I, I liked the silver. But the now that I have the gold, it kind of matches with the tone of the knot here, with the kind of the beige tips and the, the brown. Um, it may... I mean, maybe I'll like it better than the silver, so we'll see. Uh, but this is a favorite brush for sure. I would definitely be passing it on and selling it if it weren't, because it's a uh, it's it's a pricey one. Did not be a favorite. All right, guys. Um, wonderful sense I'm kind of living in right now, and I hope that you got something out of this shave too. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and we'll see you next time. Take care now.